That's my map, and it doesn't need holes in it, you dickhead. Hey there, bronze leaders. Welcome back to Sonicet Plays Adam RPG. This is episode four. Uh, if you remember in the last one, if you've been keeping up, we uh, got murdered a number of times, a lot of times, and we got through some fighting, uh, kind of have, I would like to think, a better idea of how combat works and how uh, to play our character a little bit. We, um, we finished the, what looked like at least the starting main quest for the town, and now we're uh, progressing that. Are we actually running? No, now we are. And so we're headed, if you remember uh, from last episode, we're going to the, the outpost, the mercenary outpost, because they want us to infiltrate it. Um, now that mercenary outpost must be this one. Uh, I need to infiltrate the gang for the village head, the factory. And I do believe, yeah, abandoned, it says abandoned factory, like literally right there. Um, let's see, what else do we got going on? We're still addicted, which is a problem that we're going to need to solve. We're doing pretty well on money right now because we got paid for, we just got paid for our last job. Uh, that quest that we finished where we killed that guy, obviously the first time, and he definitely didn't murder us in cold blood. You've been ambushed by bandits. If you won't do anything, they will surely attack you. Uh, yeah, we're gonna attack. You guys have fucked with the wrong guy. What do we got? Oh, I don't see any guns. <clears throat> I at least don't see any guns. So our best bet to keep the most distance between me and those other guys is to come down here. Then we'll have to get this guy to come to me. Is there a way to sneak? <clears throat> That's a good... You know what? I'm going to look this up. Because I don't actually know that there is not a way to sneak. Hold on, let me save. Let me look it up. Okay. Okay. So I just, I was reading. It doesn't appear that there's actually a sneak key. Um, sneak just determines how well you can hide from and not be seen by enemies. <clears throat> okay, so we need to get a hit on this guy, but we can afford to run back some spaces because we need him to come to us. There we go. No, you weren't supposed to have enough AP to do that. I'm not sure what the slash really is for. We have a decent ch I mean, if we could just disarm him, right? I mean, the eye, that's a pretty good chance. We could do it twice. Eight damage. Ooh, do we risk another another chance like that? Yeah. 16 damage. Damn. They still have a... Two damage. Wow, seven damage. Okay. Okay, since when do you get four attacks, buddy? Injured. He's only injured. Oh. Oh, no. I did two damage. I'm dead, super dead, the most dead. I died. Damn, I don't know if I just really need a gun or if this just, or if I'm just getting really unlucky, you know? Oh wait, 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 here's an idea. Here's an idea. If we opened with a shot on this guy, that would be a free action right now. I have a 39% chance to hit him. Got him for 14. Oh, that felt good. Yeah, I'll end my turn now. 
A 50% chance, basically. Yeah, let's do it. Miss! Ah, oh, that feels bad. I'm gonna try to get as many. I think he's gonna make it here this turn. Oh, he didn't. Oh, what a dick. Oh, no! So here's our plan. <laughs> We're gonna get stabbed. Um, what are my aimed chances? See, I, I, I'm not really sure what the big difference between eye and head is. In Fallout 1, if you hit the eye, you almost always had like a crit. Oh, he's dead. Critical for 24 damage. Okay, I I was trying to loot him, but maybe I just really can't in combat. I can't see the target. 40%? I'll take it. Yeah, well. That's unsurprising. Missed. Okay, well this is, uh... I was really hoping to have some damage in here at this point. Um, why don't I have like a reload option? That's weird. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna take the run approach. We need to get some distance. They're both gonna hit me this turn. <clears throat> okay, let's move back four spaces. And actually this space, because I don't want to get cornered, so... This way, hopefully, they can't make it to me and stab me. Oh, now it says reload. Okay. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> we're gonna run as far away as we can in the hopes that they won't have enough AP to catch up and stab me. Let's see if they have nine AP or not. No, they don't. I'm gonna try to put a little bit of di Oh wow, they're just... <clears throat> okay, so we all move the same, then it just doesn't matter. They can't make it to me. Okay, wait, that put a little bit of distance. Hold on. I promise this will be worth it. <clears throat> if not, I can just cut it out. I have one chance. One chance. If I can knock this guy down, we can do it. Okay, so we're dead. That was fun. Thanks for playing. I can't move. Goodbye. We'll try this again uh, in a second. That feels bad. Maybe I can get close-ish from back here without him knowing. Damn it. 
torso shot. 19 damage. That was real good damage. Maybe I can play this game with all three of them. I have time for that, but let's start backing up here. Gonna try this again. He's almost dead. Oh, he's toast! How lucky am I? Uh, I would love to reload now. Whoa. I don't think I can force a reload right now, though. Uh, my chance to hit that guy is zero. Let's start moving. I don't... Yeah, you can't run through there, but I'm going to want to get... I'm going to want to get a shot on that guy when he comes through here. So here we go. I have a straight line shot. Not the time to be missing. Let's move here and would do you think we I think we may be able to see him from right there. Hopefully. Yes. Yes, 20 fucking damage. He's almost dead. We have a penalty though from right here. So, we need 6. Oh, I can't undo it. Just shoot him. Not what I needed to happen. Okay, we're gonna start the fun run. Uh, I've, I've done too well this round to just start meleeing right now. I'm just gonna have to take a shot from like, as soon as he's not in All right, I have to reload now. It oddly like won't give me the reload prompt at the right time. Like right, oh, maybe I have to switch to a different option. Oh, they're cutting too close. There we go. Okay, we've reloaded. He is gonna be right on us. <clears throat> I could just try the knife at this point. Oh, deal with that. All right, now let's get some distance on this guy. Not a problem. Once we get up here, we can take some shots at him. I could probably even take him right now with a knife. But I'm not going to risk it. I want my free opening shot. Not what I was hoping for. Damn! From right here, man. From right here. Oh. Missed. Okay. Let's go for that aimed shot to the eyeball. The foot. We just need to definitely get damage every single turn. Ow. As long as we get damage every... Wow, he gets a lot of attacks. We're just gonna try to knock him down. Oh. He used something called Kasperamid. I don't remember what it does. How many times do I have to stab you in the leg, old man? Almost dead. Now you have to move one space. Deal with that. Oh, that's so much damage. Stop. Oh! Oh! We did it. Holy crap, we did it. That was, uh, did not think we were going to be able to do that. The rifle saved the day with some really cl Oh, look at that hat. An Ushanka hat. And an onion. We are almost dead. We are encumbered. But we're going to loot this guy. 
Addicted apparently doesn't seem to really go away. Uh, minus one health. Canned meat. Hey, I'll take that. Oh, we actually... Okay, we got to do something about our weight. We're currently at 37 out of 30. Can we craft anything useful? Not a round, not a shot round. A uh, bolt. We could craft a bolt. Go ahead and make another one of those. Okay, so it makes seven. Hold on, does it say that I, it's gonna make seven of them somewhere? No, no, not that I see. Okay, well we have crossbow bolts. We can make a crossbow once we get rope and a, and a hat. Oh, nope, we're still too heavy. We're now 36, we really didn't change it much, honestly. Okay, we just ate that, that gave us a can. We're at 36.2, still too heavy. We have two bricks. Uh, the moral of the story is just don't carry bricks in your inventory. Why would you do that? You're, that's dumb. Good thing we learned that lesson early. Why were we carrying two bricks? Okay, so it, maybe this the same house is going to be here every time. Um, oh, oh, there's a rat. We can go kill a rat. Yeah. Let's try a slash. Eight damage. Seems like a, a decent amount of damage. Slashing seems effective. Rat missed. Get slashed. Get slashed. I'll take that. Uh, so I, it seems like maybe just monsters can be down here. Like I see another rat. I don't want to walk into the poison. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything actually lootable. So, well, that's weird. I'm not sure how that rat saw me. Um, I'll wait for you, buddy. You come to me. Oh, wow, you attacked me. Slash! Slash! He's injured. You got nothing on this rat. You got nothing. Slash! Slash! Almost dead. Rats are a lot harder than they used to be. I was kicking rats to death, and now... Oh, I'm encumbered. Fuck. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We got those two new things of meat. We're gonna leave this area, walk out of the uh, zone here, set up camp, and then cook it right away. And... Oh, it starts you right near the campfire. Yes. Roast meat again. How are we doing? 36 HP? What is our max HP? Is it actually 36? It might be. Okay. So we did that. Uh, let's leave. We're no longer, we're still addicted. It may be that the only way to cure addiction. Well, it doesn't say. I'm not really sure to be honest. Um, maybe it's just a drug that I have to take. I'm oh, now I'm in withdrawal. Okay, so because of that, we're gonna need to drop some more stuff. Drop the spoons. Uh, the rusty knife. Drop it because we have a nice knife. Uh, what are we at now? Twenty-eight out of twenty-two. Damn. Um, oh, okay, we equipped that, and we'll put on a stupid hat, but it gives us 10 survival, so hell, why not? Uh, two shivs that are actually completely useless. Drop those. Uh, da -da 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 -da. how close are we now? We're at 28 out of 22. We have not changed. It just seems to be that I have a lot of stuff. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna drop the water. Oh, we can move. Okay, after just dropping the water. We're not fast, but I'm really hoping that uh, the withdrawal just goes away.
There's no way it could stick with you the entire game, right? Right? That would be crazy if it did that. So they definitely wouldn't do that, right? Oh no. We're gonna have to walk this whole thing. That's fine. We'll we'll do it. Maybe we'll find some drugs that will How did I miss this house? I don't know how I missed this. Okay, I'm just gonna walk into your house. And uh, I shouldn't be looting, but I'm gonna loot all this in here, so please don't mind me. Hey, we're still not over encumbered. It's gonna be one spindle of wire that does it. One spindle of wire is gonna push us over. Oh no, wasn't, okay, well. We have more wire. Uh, let's go talk to this dude who before really didn't care for us. Really just didn't care for us at all. You again, Wanderer. Show the thief's passport. Does this pay, uh, piece of paper tell you anything? The man looks at the card and smirks. After that, he takes his hands from the assault rifle and takes a few steps towards you. Got yourself a thief's passport, I see. This is getting interesting. Where'd you get it? In Krasnozmanian? Um... Well, this is seeming bad. I, I thought we might just walk right in. Uh, nope, not in Krasnyazdmini. That's the way it is, huh? And how did you get it then? Because these cards are only made in Krasnyazdmini. Did your fairy godmother give it to you the day you turned 12? Or are you just trying to make a fool of me? I looted it off a corpse on the road. Not, not completely a lie. You're a looter, huh? A grave robber? I don't think we need people like you. Piss off. Ooh, I definitely don't have strength. I definitely don't have gambling. I might have intellect. I'm a smart man. Any group needs a thinker. Success. Why is it in red? That looks like it failed. It should be in green. You look the man in the eyes. He inspects you for a while and then nods as a sign of respect. It seems you pass through his skepticism. Fine, fine. Just remember that we're not really bandits around here. More like local police. Our boss, Dan, even spoke to the Chamber of Cos Commerce in Cray on the matter of officially accepting us as lawmen. We'll be guarding the northern border, get it? Soon we won't have to loot the homes of nearby peasants. That's not very Robin Hood of you. We will tax them all proper like, ha <laughs> No punk will be able to join our mighty group then. Oh wow, even an idiot can see right through your bullshit. You're nothing but bandits! I sure do love the law. I think a man with some criminal sense is the right man for you. The man looks at you with a smirk. You got twitchy real fast, man. I was kidding. You're a tough son of a bitch. We always need those type of folks around here. Let's pretend I gave you an amnesty. So how about that job, then? It's none of my business. Go see Dan. Dennis Denisovich. This guy's name... is Dan Dennis Denisovich? Okay. He's our boss. Ask him. He's in that house behind me. He holds his office there. Tell him you came from Kosoi, and maybe he'll give you some work. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, you can take a walk around the camp if you want to. Upgrade, boys. We're in. All right, so what do we got here? Uh, we have a rundown factory. This guy back here who I could murder and no one would know. Oh, he's not going to stay back there. Uh, what's in here? Let me go in here. There's also that little hut over there. This appears to be some kind of a factory. Does it look like they have a shop or anything? I'm not seeing... Not seeing anything that looks like it would be a shop. Let's go over here. I could store a bunch of my stuff here just to get it out of my inventory because I should be able to get back here a couple, you know, a number of times, really. And then at least we wouldn't have to walk everywhere, you know? Okay, so that's actually the guy I'm supposed to talk to, I'm sure. Ooh, he has a qualitative knife. This knife is in good shape, useful in all sorts of situations. Wow, that's actually like a, a really nice version. Ooh. Oh, he has condoms. Well, that's good. I mean, you may as well stay clean. I'm going to try it. I got to try it. 
I gotta try it. It didn't work. Uh, okay, let's start by checking this. 14.5 millimeter round. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna put stuff in this bookshelf, but I also need to wait till people are, you know, not looking at me directly. Nails, okay, let's start dropping some stuff off in here. Tires, uh, duh, duh, duh. canteen, this gun that I don't really like that much. Toilet paper, sure. I hope it saves all the stuff in here. I hope it doesn't just disappear. Nails. Scrap metal. Okay, we're under. We are under, okay. So hopefully, again, it saves because that would be tragic. Waste paper's at least light, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, okay, let's see what we got going on in here. That guy is not paying attention. That's mine now. Um, I'm going to rob you. Just kidding, I'm not. That guy is looking directly at me, so I'm gonna walk behind him and rob him. Most of these people honestly don't even have anything worth stealing. Uh, but I do at least want to check all the time with what people... Uh, 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 cast pyramid. Oh, so that's just a healing thing, but you can just, it's pretty much you're just going to get addicted to it. Can I talk to this guy through the gate? No, it's just a prisoner. Okay. Uh, let's see. There are beds in here. There's one guy in here that seems interesting. I'm going to check this first. Ooh, another pair of dice. I'll take another pair of dice. What do you have? 500 rubles? That is a lot of rubles. Why do you have so many rubles? I mean, if you're not paying attention... I will steal half of them. Nah. Just kidding. Wow. That looks like a guy I've seen on TV before. Before you stands an old man with a scruffy beard. His unhappy gaze is upon the wounded man lying in bed. The old man sighs from time to time, looking over the yellowing bandages on his friend's chest and stomach. Hey, why so sad, you old fuck? Drop the soap again? No. Hey, why so sad? Why so disturbed? The man looks at you in disgust. Wait, are you blind or something? Can't you see there's a wounded man here with us? Leonka, my pal. He got knifed by the bastards that came from the woods to attack the village. Who are you anyway? What do you want? If it's nothing important, just go. I'm doing a shitty job at healing my pal as it is. Someone knifed your pal over there? Yep, some of the freaks wandering in the backwoods did this to him. Uh, one good thing is that we got them all in the end. Uh, what are you busy with? In my old age, field work is not easy. I mostly help it with advice, but on some occasions I can do something more action-oriented. Come some rumors. I've seen many ruffians in my time. I even acted like one years ago. Lots of folks went to heaven because of what I did to them. But those three brothers that wanted to join us a few months ago... Damn, they were complete savages. More than any bandit I've ever met. Even the young one was completely crazy. Dan sent him on a test mission. They didn't return from it, though, so maybe we won't have crazy people like that joining our ranks after all. How's life? We already talked about life. Let me talk to this guy. A man shivers. I like that he's on the pillow. It doesn't just have a photo of his, uh, his face. It actually is the surroundings. Man shivers slightly on a dirty bed. He looks into the ceiling with unblinking eyes while breathing heavily. His wide chest is bandaged sloppily with yellow rags. Quit your staring. I have plenty of holes in me already without you making another with your gaze. Wanted to talk. The wounded bandit lifts himself up barely and takes a look at you. What's uh, wrong with you? The bandit laughs out loud. What are you, blind? I got knifed, you idiot. Knifed by a fucking kid. <laughs> Happened a month ago when we heard some rumors about a gang of crazies coming to a Trodnoye from far away. These guys, they were scavengers, animals. People like them burn the villages they pass through on a whim. We didn't want that fate for a Trodnoye. We survived by taking protection money from that village, don't you know? 
therefore we fight for it when it's in trouble. So we decided to ambush those fucks on the road. We snuck out of the woods, hid ourselves, waiting for them to pass, opened fire suddenly, and put down half of them in the instant. But the other half of that gang, god damn, they were crazy. They didn't panic. They didn't run. They attempted a melee. They literally ran unto our guns, wielding knives, clubs, and even simple pointed sticks. Sure, we got them on the end, but not before one stuck a shiv into my stomach. Took me by surprise, the dirty fuck. I was reloading when he came at me. Everyone knows the golden eye rule is if someone calls a timeout while they're trying to reload, you're not allowed to shoot them. That's just, that's just Nintendo 64 logic. You say, whoa, 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 I, I gotta reload, timeout, time. I have their golden gun, need to reload. A crazed kid, nothing else. I messed him up real good, I won't lie. I hit his head so hard it shattered. But like I said, he managed to stick me like a pig before all that. Now I'm half dead. Well, goes without saying, the guys didn't leave me to die. Washed the wound, bandaged me up to the best of their abilities, but that's not enough, you know? I'm dead already, unless a real doctor comes to look at my wound. A proper pre-war doctor, like the one in the village not far from here. Mikayan, his surname was, I think. But what are the odds of his, uh, him coming over for a house call? And if we force him, he'll just kill me and say there's nothing he could do. He's a man of principles and he hates our kind. Haha, <laughs> it's great that you've been stabbed! In the amazing yet distant country of India, they would call it karma. Man, that guy is a dick. I can talk to Dr. Yumikian. The man looks at you with disgust. Are you serious there, pal? Because there's no reason to con a dead man. But in case you're for real, I'd pay you... Well, all the money and ammo I got will be yours. Damn it, I will give you my last pair of pants if you pull this off. I promise. You'd save my life and I'll owe you for life. I'll go find you a doctor. I think I can knock that out. Are these free supplies? Free supply? No. No, in fact, I can't steal from any of that. Uh, okay, before we go that way, does this place have an entrance? Can I walk in this? No. Wait. No, it's locked. Yeah, there's like a gate there and I can't... Can't get into it. I think I already checked that guy. We can't go in there. Uh, let's take a look around the back. Which guy is this? Did I already try looking at his, uh... He has some, uh, shotgun shells. That's not really what I want. I was already in there. Oh, there's trash cans. Take that. And they better not get mad at me, because honestly, this is the trash. You guys toss this stuff out, so you're not allowed to, like, get mad at me if suddenly you're like, but I wanted that. Or like, you're stealing from us. You're garbage, maybe. Wait, does this girl really have nothing on her, or did it just glitch out because I was too far away? No, she really has literally nothing on her. I need you to walk away so I can look at this dude's pockets and attempt to steal. Thank you. Okay, this guy has a stim pack. And I want it. So I'm going to take it. Just kidding. I'm not going to. Because apparently my thief skill is still not high enough. I had to raise speechcraft and stuff. Like, I... Talk to this guy. Kind of looks like Liam Neeson. You see a tall, strong man in his 40s. He's armed and dressed like many of his comrades in the bandit camp, but one little detail sticks out. On the sleeve of his thick jacket is a sunburn tag with a blood type. It obviously came from some sort of uniform. Seeing you approach, the man glances at you as if evaluating your worth. Well, fuck you too, buddy. If you have some business, speak to my boss. Understood? On my way. Understood. I was actually just trying to walk up behind you to pickpocket you from the front. Watch me actually take this from you right now. Yeah, I didn't... I mean, I didn't think so, but one has to try, right? I love that they don't... Oh! Uh, it's a key... Oh, okay. I thought this was the drug that would make us no longer, um... Oh, I want some cologne. Withdrawal. I thought it would... Okay, well. Stealing still not uh, my strong suit. What a sweet mustache. Before you stands a tall man in a dusty suit with a leather holster on his hip. 
He looks nothing like the rest of the men out here in the abandoned factory. He stands straight. His hair combed, his eyes radiate intelligence. Upon seeing you, he fixes his tie and says in a calm, measured tone, Smiley face. I'm listening. Aren't you Denis Denisovich? The same, and who are you? Your real name, please. Denis Denisovich pet, pets his large mustache and looks you straight in the eye. You start feeling uncomfortable. He almost peers straight into your soul with his cold glaze. Gaze. Sonicette. The boss writes your name into a small notebook. Then he looks at you as if waiting for you to keep talking. Well, I was sent here by Kosoi. It's about a job. Oh, I see. And why did Kosoi think you'd make such a good candidate? You see, we're looking for a very specific type of person. Well, I had a thief's passport. <laughs> so you're one of those types. Well, fine. I won't li look a gift horse in the mouth. Are you looking for a job? That's right. Job, job, job. Hmm. Boss clicks his tongue. I have a job for you. No, better call it a test. Look, go into the main facility where we made our barracks. You go in there looking for a locked door. In front of it, there's going to be two guards. Talk to the one they call Shit <laughs> Shizak. Shishak. He'll give you the rest of the instructions. I almost read his name as Shitsnack. But that's not right. Nod silently. A man of few words. Yes, that's good. Be sure to return when you're done. We'll discuss your future. Okay. Uh, a locked door with two guards in front of it. I don't see any kind of door over there. Okay, I didn't... I didn't look at that. Oh, 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 there's two. I see. I couldn't see them because of the way the camera was turned. You see a short, nimble guy who keeps watch in front of some undistinguished door. He quietly talks with his comrade, but upon seeing you, waves his hand in salutation. He looks at you with a crooked smile. Hey there, chief. Are you by chance Shishak? He looks at you with a sly grin on his face. Dan sent you to talk to Shishak. Well, let's assume that you found him. Tell it straight. Are you him or not? The man looks at you quizzically. Let's assume that I'm the real Shishak. The word is assume. Speechcraft. Listen, Vic. You can talk like that with your hoe or whatever. Say it straight before I shank your ass. Hey, I don't want no drama. I just got bored and decided to play a little practical joke. You need to speak with that dude over there. Points at the guy next to him. That Streetwise book, thank you, Oni, because that was helpful. I think I would have failed that otherwise. Wow, this guy is not taking anyone's shit. Before you stands a broad-shouldered man with cold, cruel eyes. He quietly talks about something with his comrade, but the sight of you, he turns and looks at you from under his brows. There's an unpleasant smile on his face. Looks like he's planning something malicious about you. Hi, Dan sent me. Are you by chance Shishak? Maybe yes, or maybe no. What did Dan say to you? Listen. Dan told me, fuck you. Dan told me to speak with Shishak. So the man spits and looks at you with a cold stare. At last, he shakes his shoulders and takes out a bunch of keys. He reluctantly begins to sort them out. Well, here I am, son. Shishak himself. Don't pass out from excitement. Just wait patiently. Shishak starts whistling to himself. He's checking the keys for a second round and has absolutely no plans to somehow accelerate this process. We need to unlock this door, son, and as you can see, there's a whole ocean of keys on this ring. A good portion of them don't open anything at all in this camp. Just been there when I found it. I never did get to sort them out. Hope you understand. Wait patiently. Shishak yawns and lazily crunches his neck. Then he proceeds to search for the right key. He does not hurry, periodically throwing up some meaningless phrases to a man that stands next to him. He's obviously taking his time. What's the correct one? I can't seem to remember. Heck, excuse me, son. It's a bit awkward, really. Yeah, real awkward. Nope, we're just gonna nod silently. Time flows. Feels like Shishak already forgot about the right key, about you and everything else in the world. He's deliberately, slowly, and thoughtfully driving his fingers along the bunch. Stretches and only occasionally rages, raises his eye to you at sli to slightly grin. Finally, he snaps his finger and takes out an unremarkable brass key. Oh, well, here it is. Well, you see how fast I am. No need for nagging, boy. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna push him. Hey, hey, hey! What are we doing, boys? Before you... Hey, I had said mustachioed early, and now it, it actually is. He is, actually is mustachioed. 
Before you stands, he's not standing, he's on his knees, let's just be real. Before you stands a mustachioed man in his 40s. He's a, he is as white as a sheet and his captors had put a gag of dirty cloth in his mouth, I see. His arms and legs are bound with a sweat-soaked rope. He looks around the room with desperation, periodically stopping his gaze on you. It's obvious that the only way to free him is to cut the ropes. Well, we're not doing that right now, so what's up? Shishak. Looky here, kid. We keep our guest in his room. He swiftly squats in front of the prisoner, making him instinctively recoil in the opposite direction and shrunk even more than before. Shishak then starts rhythmically clapping his hands near the prisoner's head. The prisoner winces with every clap. He was a little tense. His silence made no sense. And I saw this little piece of crap and put him in a body bag. Why are you so antsy? Stop shivering. Look me in the eyes, you stupid fuck. The prisoner blinks in fear and carefully raises his watery eyes on Shishak. The bandit clicks his tongue and dabs his large fist to the prisoner's face. Dabs? Like dabs his fist to his face? Okay. The prisoner shuts his eyes, but Shishak only grins and dusts off his pants. He looked, looks at you and spreads his hands. He's a nervous fellow and a bit taciturn, but maybe because of the gag. Ha! <laughs> uh, funny, what do I need to do? Looky here, your job is easy peasy. Shishak reaches into his bosom and gets a polished TT gun. He hands it to you, grip forward. Here's a gun, has one bullet. Here's this mutton head, the rest is up to you. I give you a full carte blanche. You may kill him right away or excruciate him first. Do as you want. I don't really care since he keeps harping on the same string. I have no money, I'm not a millionaire. Only the grave can fix him or some vigorous beatings on important organs. The bound prisoner begins to shudder. He mumbles something with the gag still in his mouth. He looks at you with a mixed expression, with hope and fear at the same time, but more the fear. Shishak walks a couple of steps and begins to watch with interest the second Thug joins him. Shit! I really don't want to kill this guy. And I can't kill a whole camp full of bandits right now. I'm gonna hit him. No, I'm gonna do nothing. You look at the gun in your hands, then at the faded prisoner, and then cross your arms over your chest and silently look at Shishak. He glowers at you. What the hell's wrong with you? Do something. Let's hit him. You swing and hit the bounded prisoner with a pistol grip. The man silently shrinks and instinctively hides his head in his shoulders. Shishak grins and winks at his companion. Look at this guy. That's a man who enjoys what he's doing. Hit him again. You hit the prisoner and he starts shaking his head from side to side, as if showing that he's hurt some, uh, that he is hurt in some naive attempt to make you stop. Shishak loudly coughs in the far corner and yawns into a fist. Shishak spits and shrugs his shoulders in irritation. He looks at you with sullen dislike and says hoarsely, Come on, anger me, son. What is this? What are you afraid of? Come on already. Don't stand there like a goddamn pillar of salt. I, I can't kill the whole camp. I'm, I aim at the prisoner. You raise the gun at the prisoner. The bounded man begins to quietly whimper and slowly creeps away from you. You can read pleading and fear in his deer like gaze, which is fixated on the muzzle of the gun. Shoot him in the leg. You pull the trigger and nothing happens. Instead of a shot, you hear only a clicking sound. The magazine is empty. You look at Shishak in astonishment while the unscathed captive quietly sobs on the floor. Shishak cheerfully winks you and takes the gun. Ha! Huh, and you thought it was loaded. Ha! Huh, and you thought it was loaded, son. What a clown. This lucky bastard can still come in handy. I feel that he didn't tell us everything, but you also demonstrated yourself from an interesting angle. Tried to shoot him in cold blood. Ugh! Shinir comes mirror. The man calls his friend and whispers something in his ear. Then he slaps him on the back and Shinir darts off and runs out of the room. Now let's go see what Dan will have to say about all of this. You got some interesting tests. Hey, uh, quick question. Can I steal from you? Oh, he has a gun. I'm gonna try to steal it, boys. That failed. What does this guy have? Nothing. I was really hoping to get that gun. Really wanted it. It would have been perfect. It was a pistol. It was a named pistol at that. What bro? I, I'm, I'm ready. I did it. 
Dan nods, extricates a notebook from his inner pocket and consults his mysterious notes. Then he hides it back in the depths of his pocket and looks at you. We both know that already. You're a curious case. Why is that? You didn't strike me as a man who could kill a person without thinking twice. I'm interested in what's driving you. Go on, tell me. Um... I didn't want to kill him. Maybe hurt him a little in the worst case. I suspected that the gun... No, I sure didn't. I just wanted to hurt him a tiny bit. Ah, so that was your plan. I see now. It's even humane in its own way. So it means you don't want to kill, but if the need arises, you have no scruples about shooting someone. So your way of thinking is clear, but then the question then arises, how can I use you? Okay, so I had a different task in store for you, but seeing as how you have such a sober mind, there will be something else for you to do. It requires using not just your muscle, but perhaps even your brain power. Yep, give me the deets. So I had a visit recently. Three brothers came to me asking for a job. Like in a fairy tale, the eldest was smart, the middle was neither smart nor stupid, and the youngest was sl slow as a snail. All three were rather unpleasant, but nothing too horrible. An average level of post-apocalyptic cruelty. I wanted to test them. You see, there's a little farm under our protection, not too far from here. Its residents got too carefree, so I sent these brothers to levy the tribute they owed me. The problem is, a quite a bit of time has passed since, and I haven't heard from them. I want you to find out what happened to those three brothers. Understood. Where should I start? For starters, I'd visit the farm they were heading to. Ask the farmers what they know and whether they've seen the brothers at all. Give me your map. I'll show you where it is. You hand the map over to Dan, who pierces a tiny hole in the place where the apparently the farm is located. Then he returns it to you abruptly. That's my map! And it doesn't need holes in it, you dickhead! That's the place. Have you got your task? You have. Now go. I want to talk to you about the captive. Now that's interesting. And what did you want to discuss? Who he is? What's he doing here? Or did you want to bail him out? I mean, pay his ransom. What is he doing here? Some of my men arrested him after he said something about being secretly rich while on a drinking binge. Our organization is something like the law around these parts. We hold the monopoly on violence, if you know what I mean. But we asked for tax money in return. And this fiend didn't pay what he could, obviously, so now he's in a cell. Guilty of not paying enough taxes. Well, who is he? A tax specialist from a village called Atrodnae, a small-time alcoholic, a loser. A... This is the guy that they said ran out and didn't come back. He's a really advanced handyman. All in all, a pretty balanced character. Can I free him? Because that's important. Sure, but not for free. Twist it all you like, but he did break the law. An unwritten one, but still. While we investigate, he must be kept behind bars. If someone kind enough to bail him out doesn't show up, that is. What is the price of freedom? What do you think in terms of cash? Depends on the seller. In that case, 500 rubles and he's free to roam. No barter, no wordsmithing, just money, pure and simple. Speechcraft. Maybe there's a way I can take him off your hands for cheaper. What do you think, Dennis Denisovich? Uh, he's not worth your time. You're just wasting food. Failure. Just give him the money. You hand over the sum to the leader of the bandits and he counts it, repeatedly wetting his finger with saliva. Finally, he nods and tucks the money into his shirt. After doing so, he gets out a small piece of paper, writes something on it with a stubbly pencil, and gives it to you. Here, show this note to Shishak and he'll free him. Huh. Alright, so we just spent all the money that we had on freeing this prisoner, but to be honest, we got most of that money from questing in a Trodne anyway. So it shouldn't really, you know, it's, <gasps> excuse me. I came here for the prisoner. Shishak raises his eyebrows in surprise. You don't say, and can you prove it? Do you think that any bum can come to me and say that? Give him the note. He takes the note and sh throws an incredulous look at you and frowns a little. He looks at you again, twists the note in his hands, and finally shrugs his shoulders with indifference. Well, everything seems to be in order. Okay, wait just one second. He takes his knife and quickly cuts the ropes around the hands and the feet of the prisoner. Yes! Let's go, buddy. The man nods and sniffs, glancing nervously at the surrounding area. How are you feeling? Considering the circumstances, quite well, actually. Knock on wood, nothing to complain about. Let's discuss. Follow me. Okay, um... I'm not supposed to have a companion at all. Uh, and so my stats right now have probably plummeted. Yeah. 
Uh, we just need to get them back to the village. If we get them back there, then all should be uh, all should be good. We've managed to do a lot. I honestly thought that the um that whole area here that we're in, I thought that that was just gonna be one giant brawl. Where is this guy? Oh, he's a little bit slow. But after fighting some of these random encounters, I don't have the equipment yet to handle that at all. Wait, are you carrying anything yet? No. Let's go. Uh, so we want to go back to the village. Uh, hopefully we get there without a horrible random encounter because I'm going to be way less effective in combat with him with me right now. With him with me right now. Uh-oh. Try to talk our way out. Success! Oh, wow. Okay. I was really worried that we were going to have to fight that because I am in no condition right now to fight that. I really need to get rid of this withdrawal to enter. Okay. He was the guy that was supposed to fix their water container. Is that right? Um, let's just... I don't remember who had the quest... Or the water. I don't remember where I saw that addiction cleaner. Addiction fixer. Oh, it's running. You can wash yourself and drink some water right from the sink, but you need to hold some container if you want to take some water with you. Information. You see a water sink. Um... Empty bottle. Wait, yes. Wait, really? You fill it with uh, clean water. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Did that fill? No, it just filled one of them. Perfect. Uh, and we are real close to being over our weight limit here. The engines... Oh, okay, here he is. You see a stocky mustached man. He used to be a mustachioed man. So, hey, bro, I see you got to the village A-OK. -okay. I also just came from the factory. I'm sorry I didn't say goodbye the last time you saw me. I just wanted to get home so badly. I mean, I, I get that. Listen, thank you for saving me. I don't know how long I'd last with those fuckers. I must say, though, when I saw you entering the cell, I thought I was a dead man for sure. And when you pulled that trigger, I made peace with my gods. But but you probably did it because you knew the gun wasn't loaded. Yes. That is why I did it. Correct? I was disappointed. That's why I shot y I, you. Uh, the man laughs nervously. Yeah, I, I would too. Yeah, that's what I thought. No matter, though. Thanks for saving me. Without you, I wouldn't be here. I need to thank you for the rescue somehow, right? Yeah, you fucking do, because it was expensive as shit. Look, brother, most people around here think I'm poor, but it's not true. I'm actually really handy, and I don't repair stuff just for the village. I have a stash. There's an empty old house behind the gates filled with all sorts of garbage. That's where I keep my lockbox. There's a switch to the left of the entrance. Push it, and you'll see light coming from the old bed. Push it out of the way, and boom, you're in my personal cellar. That's where he keeps... The code is 3805. Not hard, right? Only four digits. Take everything I keep inside. Don't be shy. There's not a lot of money in there, but I hope it will help you in your travels. 3805. 3805. Okay. Oh. Wow. 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 I did not see that at all the first time I was here. Well, yeah, let's let's heck and go. Damn, I completely missed that. Okay, so it's definitely important to be swir swir uh, spinning my camera. Quite the toy, you must be a nutcracker, right? But where's your sword? That seems important. There's Christmas music playing down here. Empty bottle. When I clicked on the nutcracker, that started the Christmas music. How cool is that? 
More dark. Oh, I'm right at the way. I have like. Yeah. I can take all these empty bottles. Was it three, eight, zero, five? Duffel bag, a ragged old duffel bag. Bags such as this were part of the equipment for soldiers and sergeants of the USS Army Motor Brigades. Plus 10 carry weight. Yes. Some rubles, bottle of vodka, corn seeds, waste paper. Okay, I can't move. What happened to my... What happened to... Oh, it goes there. Oh, there we go. Boom. More carry weight. This has been the most useful endeavor that I've done all game. Oh, <gasps> he had... Oh, oh. I was gonna... I almost flipped my shit. I was so excited that there was... An AK. Damaged 100 to 1,000 only for imaginary targets. Where's the sword? Is the sword here? Rope! I'm encumbered again. This weighs a lot. Wait, can I craft a crossbow now? I think I can. Yes, chance low. Ooh. Fail. You start to tighten the rope and it snaps right in your hands. Well, I guess I need more rope now. I mean, there's... Hold on. There's no way that... I mean, he must need this little gun, right? What do I do with this rifle? It has infinite ammo. But it, um... And I don't want any of these extra bottles. We are at 31.6 out of 32. Is there like a hidden sword here that I can give him? I just find it weird that the game would say that if there was not something that I could do for him. Well, this whole area is Christmas themed. It's really cool. I like this little, this kind of like Easter egg thing. Uh, okay, that was neat. Can I plant this there then? Because I got corn seeds. We're going to be wrapping up here in just a second. First, you need to plant the crops. Well, yeah, I have corn seeds. Oh, you plant the crops. Now it's time for you to wait for the harvest. Oh, well, would you look at that? I did it. Okay, let's uh, head back into town. Uh, again, I don't remember where I had seen, where I had seen that uh, drug that fixes your, your withdrawal. I'm fairly certain I'm stuck with this withdrawal until I actually do something about it. Let's check the bar. Can we trade with Katya? Uh, perfume, water, and rubles. No. I don't think this guy would have beer, pre war vodka. Here for hangovers, but not withdrawal. Shit. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap up there because we're way over, just like always. 
Um, but this has been episode four. We got a lot done here. Checked out that establishment, did some more combat. We're making our way downtown faces pass. Uh, and so I will see you guys in episode five when we hopefully find a real gun. That's what we're working towards, boys. Finding a real gun. See you guys next time. Stay bronze, guys.